Barbara hides the bottle that she keeps inside her purse. The friends are at the diner, I always know. She knows she has a problem, but she doesn't know what's worse. Uh, four hours in and the crew is clapping just to try and stay awake. <laughs> These are uh, our songs, by the way. Um, again, we're one moment. There's some Earl involved and stuff. Um, here's a song that uh, came from a former incarnation of ourselves, a band called Teasing Zen. This, one's, uh, this one will go out to Bob and Carla. <laughs> Over 
ground Which is upside down The biggest stick makes you strong One nuke and you'll be long A whole new color to the dawn So take a look around I'm talking to you It's got to be another way What if there were no next day To be together now So take a dudes and take a chance Before you lapse back into your trance Pray I please have one last dance If time can just allow I'm talking to you How we doing, Mr. Producer Man? All right, so I think we're good. Uh, thanks for staying tuned. I'm going away. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks again to 30 Hour Day and all those of you that are supporting it. Bye. 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 Hi. Thanks so much to One Moment. That Thank was you so awesome. So much. Fantastic, and it was the only concentrated time that they've gotten. On the stream off of us. I know, and we, you know what? For some reason, the stream numbers went way up while way. they were on. Uh, have they gone back down yet? Yeah, they're leaving as we speak. We were up oh, over. Oh no, no, they just went up. Oh, they're it still just going went up. up. But maybe, could be, maybe they know what's coming up next. Yeah, I think people are tuning in for the, you know. No, if you tell them, hey, what time is it? Oh, it's 6:58. Let's see where oh. we're at. Let's check this, and then you've got the special. Well, it has to be. It has to be seven before I can do the special thing with it. And maybe we, should, we tell, should mention our sponsor at seven. Maybe I should tell the the next act that's coming up what the special letter is and, and let, let them, them do tell it. Us. That's a good idea. I wonder. I, I think I'm going to work that out. I don't think they can hear you. Mm. So. No. I'll start our next sponsor a little early. The sponsor of the next hour is KGW The Square for the seven o'clock hour because well they're on at seven o'clock. They're on at seven so, o'clock. If you want to go over and watch, mm -hmm. you can. But you they're going to have put, two windows opened up. They, you're going to miss these guys over here, and they're going to have part of us on at some point anyway. But we so don't just want to stay compete here. with them because you know we love we the love square. Them much. And what what did the square do for us that was super nice? Well, which part? Well, they did two super nice things. things. Okay, so I, I'm going to detail it in three parts. Okay, part, excellent. Part number one. Yes. Tomorrow, during the Variety Show, the very talented producer Aaron will be here playing transitions between acts and songs and Cammie and Rick bantering. Mm -hmm. It will give you less Cammie and Rick bantering, but you will get to listen to the fantastic Aaron Weiss playing the piano. Yes, it will be awesome. Part two. The piano's right over here. Over here, you can't see it, but it's on our beautiful set with the I trees and the chairs. It. 
it still has some ornaments on it. We might need some people More to hanging. hang some stuff. But yeah. part number two, fantastic mm -hmm. part number two. After 28 hours on the air, Steph Strickland will come down. Yeah. And she will join our merry duo and create a merry trio. Try and help us out. And she will try to help us close this out with a mm -hmm. big bang without hurting anybody. Yeah, which is awesome. She just wants to see you cry. She's going to try and make me cry. Cammie's getting some good suggestions on how to make me cry. I'm getting suggestions. I would like some more. So if One you more. have suggestions on how I can make Rick cry, please, at Cammie Chaos, C-A-M-I-K-A-O-S on Twitter, how I can make Mr. Trozzi here cry more. Um, and really awesome thing number three that will become available tomorrow morning when we start the auction is uh, two people. You and will, a friend. You and a friend, whoever bids the highest. We'll get to go to the uh, KGW studio on the square and watch a live recording of Live at 7. Hang in, out. In the studio. See behind the scenes, see what goes on. You get to see their behind the scenes stream, but... There's this little table that I bet you get to see yeah, at. Yeah. I love that table. And can't they also, can't they choose between the booth and the... I think so. I th we think I should, you might be able to I go to the booth. I should check that email. The booth is really cool. The booth is super duper cool. The square I, is cool, I'm just going to try to keep cool. Dr. Normal from bidding on it. Yeah, you may, he may... I may go for that one. Yeah. There's other stuff, though. There's yeah. another one that I think he might yeah. try to get as well, just to see what he can Lots of cool auction do. items tomorrow. Yeah. I know. Ah. You can hardly wait. It'll be fun. Are we glossing over there. that one? We'll do it. Which what? one? What? Huh? What no, did you say? Nothing. Is it time for me to do the next letter? Oh, yes. It's 702. I've got letter number four. She has the letter. Is it really letter number four time? Are we really? I can't believe we're in the fourth hour. No, we're not in the fourth we're hour. Not. We're in the third hour. But we did one in the... What was the last one I did? It was... Did we can't tell. The last one no, you I did No, I know, but I... Okay, so I know it's time for the next letter. Because okay. I remember what I used. I You're said, this letter is four, and then I said something. And, and I was all sweet and charming for a moment. <clears throat> it passed quickly. So, Clearly. do you want to tell them? No, go ahead. I think it's only fair. Do you don't remember what it is, do you? Uh-uh. I do, it's A, but I was going to let you do it. No, I got to the last one. I think we should go every other. It's A. Again. A. I get A again. Lots the of A's. A. There will be some A's happening. Lots but of don't A's. tell them that, because then they'll just make up a word. A is for airplane. A is for airplane. So, we... A is for awesome... Awesome is an awesome A word. Yeah, it is an awesome A word. Altitude. You, uh, Altitude. Yes. What? Uh, Altimeter. Now you're killing me. I don't have any A words. Avalanche. Oh, that was a good one. Right there, avalanche. I like that, no, avalanche. That's good. Yeah. avalanche. Right. Oh, the production table's back, so we can figure out what we're doing. Oh, I was staring over there, table. blankly, and they weren't there. I know. That's why they didn't turn on the production cam up there, because they were all running on no, somewhere else. I the fact that um, I am now officially a part of the production staff, because I turned the lights on. I know. You're doing double duty. Not only talent, but also production and staff. And booking things, too. And booking things on the email and stuff. Yeah, and reading the Twitter. Reading the Twitter. It's a lot of work here at 30 Hour Day. It's not just all lounging around in leather high-back chairs. In this chair? These are by the tree. Chairs. It's a great tree. I've got a poinsettia. You got a poinsettia right there? It's yeah, holding is this up your pretty mom's well. poinsettia? It is. My mom brought that. Thank you, Rick's mom. Yeah. For the Thanks. lovely poinsettia. See you later, maybe. She'll come on down. Who knows? <laughs> when, I, when I'm like, I need my mommy, I'm done. <laughs> my mommy already came to visit. Yeah, so. It was helpful. I really appreciate it. Crossed my leg again, for those of you keeping score at home. Should I hit you for that? Yeah, just one. There. Okay. That's so good. So that was a double for you guys, in case you're trouble. So earlier we were told that we would be, uh, you know, tossing to somebody, but the production crew doesn't really look ready for us. Today. Oh, they're oh, ready? They are. Oh, well, I guess oh we're good gosh. to go. So our next, kicking off the Portland Podcast, Podcast. All-Stars. Court and Fatboy. Let's go over there. Do it for See radio. Court and Fatboy. You guys ready? Hey, right, there they are. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Weird. Hello. Are we on? Is this us now? <laughs> are we good? Oh, uh, hell yeah. It is the Court and Fatboy Show. Uh, welcome <laughs> to that whole thing. Uh, very That's got to be one of the most graceful we, intros we've ever pulled off me, in the history of the show. Let me just go ahead and stammer away my way into this. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, welcome, and uh, welcome to 30 Hour Day. We are uh, broadcasting live. 
from 30 Hour Day. Uh, we will have uh, some fine tunage here in just a few moments from uh, Target for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We were trying to get him to do like uh, intro music. We were trying yeah. to get him to do like, you know, da 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 Right. There's yeah. Court and Fat Boy, but instead we just skip straight to the yeah. part. Yeah. <laughs> That's of what we do show. best. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, and of course, a huge benefit uh, for Toys for Tots, for uh, Oregon Food Bank, and for Free Geek. Yes. So, if you can, right now, rush to your credit card. And <laughs> You're going to rush to your computer, but they're watching us right now. <laughs> throw your credit card this direction if you could. That would be great. No, um, you want them to actually type the numbers into the... No, they just, give, if they're throwing the card cards. at the screen, that's bad. Open that's, a new tab. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then throw the card and, at that. And then keep listening yeah. over here. <laughs> Uh, and, and by the way, welcome to uh, Mike Russell of the Oregonian as well. Uh, I'm Court, Fat Boy. And uh, so, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing our show live here uh, as we do. Uh, we'll just be doing it in a different setting. So, yeah. So, um, and, and hopefully while you're watching, um, please uh, donate. Yeah. Please, you're, you're at 30 hour day right now. Mm -hmm. uh, click some of those little funky donate buttons and send some cash. Even if you've only got like five bucks. I mean, I know it's, it's a recession. Right. Tech, it's probably a depression. No, we're coming out of it, man. It's, Are all, we? Yeah. it's all golden now. We're all. You know we're screwed days. when court is the face of optimism. <laughs> you, you, you squinty, ramble souled man. Yes, You're the indeed. face of optimism. Well, you had a great year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but firings. Um, um, but whatever you can donate, please donate while we're on. This, this isn't just free entertainment and uh, fun to watch everybody just kind of like stumble and trip over themselves trying to put on a show. Yeah. This is also uh, a benefit. So if you could please. Benefit people. Money. Yeah. Give us money. Um, today's show is also going to be interesting because um, not only are we doing it live with cameras on us, yeah. which is very disconcerting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I keep waiting for like Joe Dolan to stride in and go, "This is a train wreck." <laughs> You're all awful. We got to throw it to somebody. Fire. Anybody. Yeah. yeah um, so not only are we being videotaped, but uh, we're not going to be doing dirty laundry. We're not going to be doing backstage vlog. Yeah. We're not going to be doing any of the normal stuff we do because uh, this is a massive movie weekend, yes. and uh, Mike Russell's going to have to pull a lot of weight tonight because we're going to be discussing Avatar. Yeah. Um, and not only are we going to be discussing Avatar, I'm fairly certain we're going to be talking about, uh, what's, what's, you, you got other We're, we're going to talk about uh, Bad Lieutenant. Which I'm very curious about. Port of Call New Orleans. Yeah. The return of insane Nicolas Cage nice. to, yeah. uh, to movie screens. And briefly, for as much as you can say, uh, something about Sherlock Holmes. I'm a little embargoed on it, but I will probably say a little nice thing about Sherlock Holmes. Okay. I, I'm sort of also a little embargoed, but I've been told by my editor that um, embargoed or not, my, my review is running on Saturday, so nice. I might as well just go ahead and start talking a little bit about it. Okay. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll see how well that goes over with the people who say I can go to screenings. Um, a few things, though. Well, at least they won't hear about it yeah <laughs> there, no no place to see that anywhere um uh, a few things first uh some rumors and such like that uh, news uh of, of movie things have, has come out in the uh last few days uh a couple little things here first of all uh it looks like brian singer uh, is, is gonna be back on x-men yeah. we have an idea yeah. of what uh, that x-men movie will look like it's gonna be uh, X-Men First Class, basically. We go it's going to be a prequel. Yeah, it's going to be a prequel. They're going to they're cover uh, Magneto and uh, and Professor X back when they were kids. They were young toughs. Well, that worked really well with Wolverine. So, right. personally, I don't see what could possibly go wrong. <laughs> well, no, because it's Brian Singer. Brian Singer is coming back to, to, yeah. the, uh, to, the, to the bosom yeah. that made him the guy that wrecked Superman Returns. And mm -hmm. that's, that's supposed to be really uh, encouraging. Yeah. For, I feel bad making fun of Brian Singer because... I think he's a decent guy. No, he's a great filmmaker. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's a good guy. And, and aside from you know being really good at making films, just like when I see him interviewed, he seems like sort of like this, this shuffling, nerdy nebbish, yeah. and and, uh, and and you know just kind of looking well, up. And I I, I kind of just hug him. X Men's an important movie yeah. because he really loved genre and he took it seriously as science fiction. Right. Uh, and that really is. Um, he was the first to kind of do a a, a superhero movie right. Yeah. Um, he was the first to really kind of like, at least had gave the appearance that he read the books at least once yeah. um, and had a general idea of what these characters were supposed to, supposed to do. And I remember when the movie came out, when, when the first X-Men came out, everybody was like, yes, that's the way they're supposed to look. That's the way they're supposed Actually, to Actually, no, look. a lot of people were like, that's not at all. Really? How no, because they looked like, you know, uh, they were spray-tanned Michelin men. Basically, their costumes weren't right. Everyone was well, crapping okay, their pants yeah, every, about how the okay, costumes were. The right. idiots were, were bitching about the costumes. Okay, but the how, how how good would have Wolverine really looked in the yellow spandex? I mean, they reference it in the movie. Yeah. He would have looked stupid in those yellow spandex. Yeah. Everybody would have looked stupid in those costumes. So they, I think they did the right thing. I know, Jean, Jean Grey probably would have looked okay. She probably would have. Yeah, okay, looked. okay. Thank you, my everybody, friend. Everybody except Jean Grey. That's two against one. <laughs> I'm back, I'm like, I'm the genius. I mean, the genius of X Men is that it, it treats uh, the superhero. It treats the superhero genre right because it uses a lot of ver verisimilitude. Yeah. But also, it treats it as science fiction mm -hmm. in which people have superpowers, not 
superhero movie yeah. making, right. which I think was a big distinction at the time. Mm-hmm. Remember that movie came out in like 2000. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I'll, it, it changed the landscape of superhero filmmaking. Yeah. And then, you know, for its flaws, X Men X Two was good as well. Mm-hmm. And then X Three. No, X Two was the Wrath of Khan, is what it was. Yes. And, 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 the, and then he, and then he left to uh, to go remake Donner's Superman, mm-hmm. and it all fell apart. He just sort of got lost in the sauce and. I, I don't know, I just sort of feel bad for the guy because this this sort of looks like he's crawling back. I don't, right. People are like, oh, Brian Singer's going back to X Men instead of people being excited, like, yeah, finally. Yeah. They're yeah. just sort of like, oh, it's, yeah. it's sort of like hearing that your friend who uh, screwed up, like going way out of his league with this with his hot chick, is yeah. crawling back to like the chain smoking girl who who's, whose hair is sort of like the landlady from from Kingpin. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's like then, Munson is crawling back into the ba- into that bed yeah, because but, he couldn't win the bowling championship. That's but, what Brian Singer feels like. I'm sorry. Don't yeah. be mean to <laughs> Professor Xavier's Academy. It's a wonderful place. But if he can make that woman that that woman that was in that trailer park look <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> if he can make her look like Salma Hayek again, that would be great. Wow. Uh, okay, maybe maybe the, maybe the yeah. first couple movies were not Salma Hayek levels, mm-hmm. but I hope that Live at Seven is cutting in right now. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the other thing. KGW Live at 7 will be uh, cutting in at some point. Yes. Uh, to, and uh, immediately cutting away. Yeah, well, <laughs> if they haven't already. You know, yeah. Why is The Hobbit going... Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So that could be sort of disturbing and sure. might actually uh, negatively impact how much money is... Although, yeah. I could just keep going... Blah, 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 yeah, no, and, don't. And, no, we can have people... Uh, bid to shut you up to get me to stop that <laughs> like no. if you just make sickly frodo shut up yeah yeah i will bid a hundred dollars something along we'll those shove lines. him into traffic if you give us a thousand dollars i will shove him into traffic right That's, now you'll do that for free yeah stop sure thinking, I would. no 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 so you, you've got to offer something of value That's yeah. just something you're waiting to do at any minute for two thousand dollars i'll spin him around like a yeah. top first as it, as it is the camera people are like bugging us right now because um there's only so much room we have in yeah. the frame and court is just sort of naturally repelled yeah. <laughs> by me. <laughs> so he's so, just, he's you just doing drifting the entire time. <laughs> uh, well, I just feel uncomfortable being yeah. so close to people. Um, uh, so anyhow, it, this could be kind of a return to to good things with uh, with the X Men franchise, yeah. possibly, yeah. and and maybe be able to see the the, the lead characters, the original X Men, as youths in their in their in their, their first class. As youths. Youths. He's got the hat youths. on. You can say Utes. Utes. Yes. Yes, indeed. Um, the other thing, uh, 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 Lawrence Fishburne will be in Predators. Yeah, they're been stacking announced. that cast. Yeah. Uh, Adrian Brody's in that movie mm-hmm. as well, and uh, I, I forget. I, I, I remember hearing that Adrian Brody was going to be in a Predator movie, and I thought that was great. Yeah. I want this to be the Expendables of yeah. Predator yeah. movies. Well, I want the Expendables to be the Expendables. Right. I'm still the, the jury's still out as to whether that is going to work or not. I want Expendables to have Predators in it. <laughs> <laughs> Give it time, man. You know what? They're, they're throwing everybody else into it. Why not Predators too? Um, but yeah, and, and it sounds like Lawrence Fishburne is going to be the um, the seasoned vet in, uh, in, in fighting against these uh, these Predators. He's gonna be Quint. He's gonna be Quint. Oh, he's dealt with these Predators before, uh, and so he's it's gonna be his job to show everybody else how to kill them. So uh, that that was announced earlier today as well. Uh, I gotta check with Mike Russell. Uh, the Iron Man two trailer. What yeah. do you think? I liked it a lot. Yeah. It, it, it seemed to have an interesting idea, which is that Tony Stark wasn't completely redeemed yeah. by the last film. He's actually kind of a, a fame whore now. Yeah. yeah. And and I and I love the fact that it looks like the arc of the movie is going to be that Tony Stark is basically enjoying his fame and notoriety, mm-hmm. and it's going to blow up in his face really hard when yeah. Mickey Rourke shows up with electric whips. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet electric whips, and then, uh. and then uh, they're, they're it, it sort of has a similarity with Rocky Three. Now that you describe it, it is. Yeah, he's yeah. a he, the electric whip guy is the Ivan Drago. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, the Clever Lang, yeah, Clever Lang yeah. of, Actually, of Iron Man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the Rocky Four would be Ivan Drago. Uh, that's uh, a pretty good. That's I, a pretty good. Uh, Favreau uh, and Downey have said in interviews that they studied uh, very carefully. Um, the sequels that work. They studied yeah. Superman 2, mm-hmm. they studied Empire Strikes Back, and it sounds, seems to me from the trailer that they might be kind of going to that place. Right. But it also seems like they might be biting off a bit more than they can chew because I, I know for a fact that they, sh- they showed us uh, the Black Widow, played by Scarlett Johansson, mm-hmm. who's part of yeah. S.H.I.E.L.D. or maybe not part of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, right. that, that's some comics. I don't know what you're I talking about, they're... nerd. <laughs> I think she is part of Shield. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and yeah. so so you got the Black Widow, who could or might not be, you know, sort of a shadowy figure. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got a War Machine. Yep. Yeah. With, with Rhodey, who's mm-hmm. been recast with Don Cheadle, yeah. which is cool. I'm I'm happy. With and you've that. got Sam um, Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell playing the uh, sort of vaguely corrupt arms dealer who outfits War Machine yeah. for him, the sleazy arms yeah. dealer, yeah. as opposed to the noble arms, arms dealer, dealer played yeah. by Tony Stark. Uh huh. Yeah. And then you've got uh, Whiplash by Mickey Rourke, and I'm starting to wonder if we're going to start edging into Spider-Man Three territory yeah, that's or exactly. Batman and Robin territory. Yeah. For all the good sequels they've been studying, you think they would have picked up the idea that you can't have 
this many strong right. characters all smashed into the same film. One villain, one villain or two is usually that's that's the sweet spot. Once you get yeah. past like three or four villains, as long as people don't start forgiving each other and having lots of relationship problems, I'll be yeah. fine. <laughs> well, I, I think this, the other problem, uh, the other thing that uh, kind of ties us to the the Spider-Man franchise is that they they seem to be using up all their villains because you know Iron Man doesn't have that many like rock solid I know that guy kind of villains. Uh, he has just like a few. I don't and, know who the hell Whiplash is. Well, see, just, and so that they've already they've already expended all the all the good villains. And so, <laughs> wait, is that it, the Mandarin or is that another guy? No, 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 the, no, man, no the Mandarin uh, was. They were talking about putting the Mandarin in his, right. his as well. And the Mandarin, his thing is he's got rings. He's got five different rings. Ten, I think. I think he's got make, ten rings. Is it ten rings? I don't know. They make things happen. Nobody read Iron Man before this movie came see? out. See, exactly. We have to get Aaron Duran in here to, to settle this <laughs> quickly. So, um, so yeah, I mean, this kind of puts it in the, the same thing that the Spider-Man franchise has done. They, they've kind of used up all the really good villains, and that, that was something. That was another rumor that was kind of debunked earlier this week. Is that they were putting it on hold because they, they couldn't decide on the villains that the studio mm-hmm. wanted. They didn't want the Vulture because the Vulture was kind of crap. Because um, he's an old. Yes, yeah, yeah. old he's people an old. can't fight. <laughs> um, I, but, Old people can't fly. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, Spider-Man kind of has—he's got a couple more good villains, mm-hmm. and they don't seem to be using them. Uh, I mean, they—they they haven't been used the lizard. Well, the theory there is that um, that Raimi is pushing so hard for the Vulture because he knows Sony won't let him make a movie with the Vulture in it, yeah. and that's how he's going to get his j- get out of jail free card on this one. Oh, that's the rumor that he's, that he's playing studio politics. Really? Like, you give me the Vulture, and so he's like. There's no way we're going to center a Spider-Man movie around John Malkovich yeah. wearing Condor Man wings. Yeah. We're not going to let you do it. Yeah. And he's going to go, well, then, okay, buddy, I'm out of here. Yeah. Bye, bye, bye. Uh, and, and then he gets his get-out-of-jail-free card, and he's not tied to the Spider-Man thing anymore. Interesting. I mean, for all the lip service that he paid to the idea of, well, I feel bad about what I did for Spider-Man 3, and I want to give you guys a, a crackling good time yeah. with Spider-Man 4. For all that lip service, I, I do sort of get the sense he's like, eh, yeah. done. I would, I would think. I mean, after all the crap they took for Spider-Man 3, and rightfully so. I want he, him to make more Drag Me to Hell type pictures. Yeah, right. I yeah. Mean, that, that really should be what he, he does, but uh, no, he won't. I'm um, so surprised how many lists Drag Me to Hell is showing up on. Mm-hmm. The, the critics' uh, 10 best of the year. Drag Me to Hell is actually showing up on quite a few of those. Really? Um, so, uh, it looks as though we're going to be uh, heading out to... Where are we heading out to? Oh, oh Peacock Lane. Sorry. I'm going to go ahead and put on my glasses. Uh, yeah, so we're going to head out to uh, Pink Up Lane here in <laughs> about 15 minutes or so. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, we will be cutting in live out of Peacock Lane uh, in just a few moments. Uh, a couple other things. Um, there, there was a rumor going around that Tobey Maguire was going to be Bilbo Baggins no. the Hobbit. No, 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 yeah. no, no. no, no. <laughs> and, what's, and what's funny yeah. is the knee-jerk response to that um, seems to be, well, they're going to need it for the marketing purposes. I mean, they don't need for the name yeah. recognition. And that, that what? argument, people what? are people are knee-jerk responding with this. They're like, well, I mean, they're going to need a name. Yeah. No, they're not. It's the Hobbit. And they didn't need a name for the, 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 the right, trilogy. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, yeah, like, Viggo Mortensen was a pretty hot superstar. Yeah. When he, uh, <laughs> well, and he wasn't even the first guy cast. It was Stuart Townsend. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 And Elijah Wood. Oh, yeah, he's really packing him in. Oh, that, that fat kid from The Goonies. Yeah. Thumbs up. Yeah, right. I can't believe they they cast him in, the, in, in yeah. Lord of the Rings. I can't right. wait. Martin Freeman, I still want, and I'm hearing mm-hmm. this, they're still buzzing about Martin Freeman Martin from The Freeman Office, the British genius. Office, yes. being fro- uh, Bilbo, and that's what I want. I'm still pushing for David Tennant. Yeah. He looks, he'll be a great elf. Yeah, exactly. He's too <laughs> the skinny. hair, it's elf hair. Too tall, too skinny. You can, you can knock that down. You can curl it up. Too angular. Don't. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, so yeah, but uh, Toby, <laughs> see, that's what happens. Um, but Toby McGuire has come out himself and said, "Yeah, that's all wrong. I haven't, I haven't talked to anybody over there. Yeah, it'd be well, a sweet job, but no, I haven't talked to well, anybody." Well, and that's over the there. thing. It was, it was his people talking to uh, people at New Line, yeah. people at Warner Brothers. He was never being involved because it was just agents trying to see if there was any money there. So it's just basically, it's the, uh, it's the Hollywood analog to uh, two dogs sniffing each other's butts in a circle for five minutes. Right. That's all that was. But then the news leaked, mm-hmm. and so everyone's like. And there's two dogs sniffing each other's butts. Can you believe what's going on? And then the internet exploded. Yep. Which is the analog also to what it's like to tape the podcast in the basement of that house usually. Yes. Indeed. So. <laughs> Indeed. Um, all right. So in, in just a few minutes, we will uh, get to Mike Russell's reviews of Avatar. Uh, also, uh, you're going to be talking in just a few minutes about uh, Bad Lieutenant, mm. which I am so excited to yeah. see. It's, it's, it's well worth discussing. Good. Um, and then a, a brief thing on uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes. First, though, would once again like to remind everybody uh, we're broadcasting from 30 Hour Day. If you could give money, that would be fantastic. Please do. Yes, uh, because it, it, it goes to great causes, uh, including uh, Oregon Food Bank. And the thing about the Oregon Food Bank, uh, I've worked with them before. 
they're one of those they're one of the few places where you get more for your money. If you donate a dollar, they can actually get seven dollars worth of food off of one dollar. Yeah. Because they work with like like Freddy's. Like if Freddy if some jackass you know, dumps a bunch of you know Cheetos off the back of a you know a forklift or whatever. Yeah. They don't sell them because they're all dented, and you can't eat dented food. I will not eat those dented Cheetos. <laughs> yeah, so. They're all sorts of really angry land manatees yeah. in the self-checkout line. These <laughs> Cheetos! <laughs> they're going to spike in them. Exactly. Jumping so, up and down. Did I tell you about the time I went through a drive-thru and uh, that actually happened? Not with Cheetos. Somebody some spiked their Cheetos. <laughs> no, uh, we went through the drive-thru. There was an actual land manatee. There was a land manatee behind uh, the drive-thru window, yeah. and we drove through and we ordered a, a hamburger. Mm-hmm. And the hamburger wasn't quite right, so yeah. we circled around. And my friend was like, um, I asked for, I think he, wanted, he didn't want pickles. I didn't want pickles on it. You got pickles on this. And yeah. I go, okay, all right. And they give him the burger back. Um, there's still pickles on it, but now there's no ketchup. And he was like, <laughs> well, okay, you, there's still pickles on it, and there's no ketchup. And he gave it back, and he looks at it. And he goes back, and he cooks up his burger real quick, and he comes back, and he hands it to him. Here's your burger. We drive around. We realize now there's uh, no pickles and no ketchup and no cheese. <laughs> so it's just, it's just a meat cookie in a bun. <laughs> Every time you go back, he takes something else off. Yeah. So we drive around and he sees us and his eyeballs are about to pop at this point, really. And it's like, how come you haven't gotten the message? Leave me alone. And so we hand the burger back. Yeah. Like, this has absolutely nothing on it now. I just don't want pickles. That's all yeah. I don't want. He goes, grabs it and just squished it in his hand. <laughs> wow. Staring at us like, oh. Yeah. And then he opened his hand and he squished it again. And then he spiked it yeah. and jumped up and down on it. <laughs> he, was a, he was the land manatee? Yes. Yeah. That must have been an impressive sight. Yes. And so whenever... I think he wasn't a land narwhal. Yeah. Because that would have been... <laughs> that would have been dangerous. Stabby. Yes. So the Oregon Food Bank would then buy that burger. <laughs> yes. um, and then they would pass it along to poor people who have no problems about having you know, squished food in their mouth. They don't buy squished food. No, but they, they don't. They do buy the, the stuff that's been dropped off of forklifts and stuff. Mm-hmm. And they, you know, Freddy's can't sell it or won't sell it or whoever can't sell it or won't sell it. And so they buy it. I'll give you a dollar instead of you just throwing this in the trash. And then that's how they get it. Yeah. So uh, give money because it goes to a fantastic cause and you can get a lot for it. Um, so that's Toys for Tots and Free Geek also part of this whole thing. So um, I guess we'll, we'll – uh, I'm very curious to hear the, the band. Uh, okay. I, I want to hear these guys. Um, so if you uh, would – Hey, guys, I don't know if you're listening over there, but if we can hear something from uh, Target for tomorrow. You guys want to play something? Yeah! Yeah! I guess Target for tomorrow is ready. All right, guys. Oh. Oh, we're not ready. They gave us CDs. Apparently, we're, we're not ready for them. All right, then. <laughs> they thought they were ready. <laughs> <laughs> so you get some feedback and a pa 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 on the drums, and that's it. Target for tomorrow. There it is. Yes. Hey. Uh, I was waiting for that boy. to be busted out. Right. That was, that's going to happen on our show at least three more times. Yeah. As soon as they're mic'd up and ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, then I guess we'll just push forward then. Um, since we don't have, I, I'm not sure how much time we have before we're going to have to go out to Peacock Lane. Um, let's start with Sherlock Holmes. Okay. Since you can only talk about it just yeah. a little. Yeah, bit. Yeah, I can only talk about it a little bit. Um, I thought Sherlock Holmes was a lot of fun. I, you know, I, again, I'm, I, I'm embargoed, but I will say I enjoyed the film, yeah. and I enjoyed it for a, kind of a strange reason. I liked it because I felt like it was a um, 1980s Joel Silver buddy action comedy with Sherlock Holmes, and I was fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they have pumped up the action. I mean, uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s character, as you've seen from the trailers, knows martial arts mm-hmm. in addition to being a brilliant and neurotic detective. Uh, I thought Danny was a lot of fun to watch. He's, uh, he, he really does go with the Holmes, um, the, the lunatic sides of Holmes, which are in yeah. the books. Um, and in fact, they actually keep some of Holmes' drug use, which I was surprised some by. Some of them, not all of them. For whatever reason, they won't show him injecting cocaine. No, um, but they do say you've been using um, yeah. dental surgery medicine yeah. while you study flies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and so they made references to him ingesting things that he probably should not be ingesting, and he's dead on about the Joel yeah. Silver thing. People keep asking me, well, what is Sherlock Holmes? Is it yeah. like the books? Right. And Here's the thing. I, I haven't read any of the books sure. because I've been sold the imagery of, you know, like the, the Hound of the Baskervilles yeah, in the right. 50. And you got this old, you know. Deerstalker cats. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah none, none yeah. of that appeals to me. It's, it's all beige right. and boring. It's like pouring oatmeal into my soul. I don't right. want to know anything about it. So I've, I've sort of just avoided mm-hmm. uh, the Sherlock Holmes thing. So I don't know how, um, how closely it adheres to the classic stories. But what it does feel the most like is Lethal Weapon yeah. 2. Yeah. It yeah, feels nice. like, like beat for beat. You can follow along. Now, they, they do tone it down to make it a little bit quieter because it's a Victorian English fops. Right. Um, so they make it a little bit quieter, but it really is 
Lethal Weapon 2, dressed up in Sherlock Holmes clothes. And it's entertaining. I and mean, the thing is, you say that, and, and a lot of purists are going, ah, and, you know, maybe so. Um, they make what noise? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and I think there's, that's probably You're fair. You're fine, just ran onto the set. But I think <laughs> but what, what, what pleasantly surprised me is director um, Guy Ritchie yeah. does a very nice job with that. I think he makes it very palatable and very entertaining. He also does something that I really enjoyed, which is uh, Jude Law plays Watson, yeah. and Jude Law's oh, Watson yeah. he actually is very much a return of the books in the sense that he's not a buffoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's actually, Watson in some ways, he kind of walks away with the movie at times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Watson is a lot like Murtaugh in that he is the... Uh, he's, too old for this stuff? He, at one point, he says something very similar really? to that. <laughs> he's he's yeah. also like two weeks away from never working with Holmes again and relaxing yeah. wow. with, his, with his fiance. So it, He's very much the grizzled cop who's yeah. got only two weeks left on the job right. and is about to sail off into the sunset. He's very much that guy. And at the same time, he's very competent. He knows how to hold uh, Holmes' leash. Mm-hmm. Because Holmes is, as far as Scotland Yard is concerned, right. the loose cannon. Yeah. Right? Who's, who's, who's too crazy for his own good. And, yeah. and, and, and the, uh, the chief constable at Scotland Yard Practically bangs his fist on the desk yeah. and goes, "You're out of line, sir." You know, it's pretty. Is he a black guy? Please tell me. No, 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 no. no it's, it's, it's British. It's, I know, but you know, it's, that would be the. There are no black people in Britain. What are you talking about? <laughs> one or two, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> Tricky doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> Tricky just walks through. I'm the only one here yeah. in all of Britain. Yeah. Hello. Um, it would be the, awesome though if Brock Peters was there, you know, yeah. just uh, stomping yeah. on his desk, but uh, mm-hmm. as the chief. But no. no. What's What's cool about Jude Law in this is that he seems to be channeling uh, early '70s era uh, Sean Connery. Really? Yeah, Seriously, like, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. He, he's kind of buttoned down, yeah. but you get the sense that at any moment he will turn into pure tornado of ass whippery. Fantastic. Like any, and, and he's got this really cool little porn stash uh-huh. going. And he, he just the court, the, the the square, live at seven. But but he 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 seriously does have this uh, sort of suave, cool, collected charm yeah. that I think he was trying for in Alfie and failed at miserably. Right. Mm-hmm. And he went ahead and actually managed to uh, to lock it down in Sherlock Holmes. Well, Alfie and all of those movies were part of what I like to call Jude Law's alimony picture period, where he, period where he was trying to make movies to, to pay off his divorce. Yeah. And and this movie feels like he's doing it for love, and he's yeah. really fun to watch. And he, and he steals the movie. Actually, the best part of the movie is the sort of interplay between him and Holmes. They're very much uh, angry roommates mm-hmm. yeah. who've gotten on each other's nerves one too many times. It's a lot of fun to watch. I, I thoroughly, uh, I was thoroughly entertained by yeah. it. The thing that the internet keeps harping on, and you know, it, it, it's the internet, so of course it's going to harp on this. Oh, yeah. uh, it, it, the, the word gay is thrown around a lot. Uh, it, people, people seem to believe that there is a, a homosexual relationship happening between See, that's Holmes that, and, speaking and Watson. Speaking of Lord of the Rings, hmm. that that's something that just sort of uh, got wormed its way into uh, internet culture right around 2002, 2003 because yep. there was something to the idea that um, kids on the internet, immature as they are, yeah. can't deal with the idea of two guys standing close to each other and right. being friends with each other yeah. without wanting to slip each other salami. Kind of right. like we are having yeah, right, right now. now for the camera, uh-huh. you, you, which I know is making you uncomfortable. Why I'm very happy that <laughs> this is happening on a Friday and not on a Thursday, because if it was Byron in here between us... Oh my God. See, I think Stephanie Strickland over at KGW has got to wrangle Byron right now, but actually right. she's safe because... Yeah. Actually, no, she's not safe because Byron has a boob fetish and she just yes, had a kid. Yes, it is. So, yes, yeah. Indeed. yeah. Uh, Bring so, bear spray. Yeah. Bear spray. Well, yeah, maybe one of those like little tanning shields yeah. to just just set it right on her chest. Well, he's been on a he's been on a tear. Yes, he has. on your yeah. show. Oh, yeah. that's good. It has God. been awesome to behold. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm very happy that we're going to be having like a, a little holiday break here because maybe he'll he'll tone down. He'll ratchet. Really? I'm sure. I'm sure yeah. that's what'll happen. He's, he's always known for toning down. Yeah, well, we should come he, back to, to live at seven right now just to see if he's doing his segment like this. Yeah, <laughs> just staring straight at her chest yeah. the entire time. I guarantee time. you, Byron is re- is going to rethink his life during that whole period and yeah. just say, you know, I need, I'm really I'm over the line, guys. Right, I've yeah. got to just. Di- I take it back a notch. Yeah. I've really right. got a... Right. Yeah. That's exactly what he's going to do. Um, he's got so, a chalkboard and plans he's making. <laughs> anyway. So at no point is there any sort of uh, kiss or anything like that between Holmes no. and Watson. Okay. No. Because that's the way they... That's the, way the a early bromance quality, but that's sort of like... It's kind of... At the, at, it's like the bromance quality in Hot Fuzz. You know? Right. It's, that is part of the buddy action yeah, comedy. Yeah, the bromance is a... Is a fundamental part. No, yeah, this, this is a sign of the times. This is the sign of uh, insecure people hiding out behind their screens on the internet, um, yeah. afraid to like even touch their friends for fear that someone's going to call them gay. Sure. Um, like I said, if this movie had come out in the mid-80s, you wouldn't have heard people going, man, gay. Riggs and Murtaugh <laughs> told them they want to kiss each other, yeah. and they don't want to make out in the closet somewhere. <laughs> well, I think the first impulse we should all have is, so what? Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Uh, if they did, know. so what? Yeah. yeah. No, I, and, and I would be perfectly fine with that. I'm just I'm wondering if they went that route. If they, if no, you, if you took, I mean, Because I can see Guy Ritchie doing um, Rachel, the, my, the lovely Rachel McAdams, mm-hmm. my movie crush, uh, mm-hmm. is in this, playing Irene Adler, who's the, the famous woman who got away from the books. Right. Yeah. And uh, she does mention at one point that they, these two have been flirting all day, and that is gotcha. kind of 
But you know, that's just acknowledging, again, I think a trope of the buddy action comedy. Sure. And frankly, they don't make buddy action comedies anymore. No, they don't. And I liked well, them when they were in theaters. And I, yeah, yeah Hot Fuzz was, was a very nostalgic one. movie for yeah, me. Right. And this movie, I liked it very much because it was pushing that genre geek button for me. Yeah, right. it felt a lot more authentic even. I mean, well, Hot Fuzz is sort of an homage parody. Mm -hmm. yeah. this, this feels a lot more authentic to those 80s buddy cop movies than even Hot Fuzz did, as, right. as perfect an action movie as Hot Fuzz was. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask the uh, the crew here, uh, are, are we ready to go? About five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. I, I will say one thing that was interesting to me about the mystery in the movie. The mm -hmm. mystery of the movie is pretty shaggy, it's all over, yeah. but the one thing about it is that it, it is very similar in a lot of weird ways to the young Sherlock Holmes mystery Not story. Right, I, yeah. never, I never saw that. I know about the stained glass man who comes out of the window, yeah. and that was, oh, like, yeah, I remember that. was like a hallmark of CGI. Everyone yeah. goes back to that moment right. and says, this is where we realize that CGI can be what it is, and yeah. now, now you've got nine foot tall blue kitties punching oh, yeah. out. Yeah. Punching out you know, I don't want to get too much into the story, because again, yeah. we don't want to yeah. get in trouble, but I will say that the story has a very similar um, con conceit as Young Sherlock Holmes, and and uh, I always thought Young Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes was a pretty entertaining 80s sort of yeah. Anglin B picture. So that, that was, that was 80s. What yep. happens in yeah. that? What, tell me what happens in Young Sherlock Holmes. Um, in Young Sherlock remember. Holmes now, the mystery is different here, but right. in Young Sherlock Holmes there's a series of uh, murders that a, a appear to be supernatural okay. in origin. Um, and there are supernatural crimes happening, and then Holmes and Watson, who are young and in boarding school like Harry Potter, are trying to um, unravel the mystery during their first ever adventure. Is this a, a movie or a show? It's a movie. It was a movie, a movie okay. but it, yeah, it was like it was like Sherlock Holmes and Hogwarts way before Harry Potter existed. Who started it? Uh, nobody. Nobody, yeah. <laughs> nobody, nobody of note. Um, right. There was a young actress in it who looked exactly like Amy Irving, Steven Spielberg's wife, and I really? can't imagine that was an accident because Spielberg produced it. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, then, uh, but then, yeah, no, this movie has the same basic MacGuffin. There's a supernatural uh, mystery. A thing that appears to be supernatural. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. We have uh, characters who practice black magic, and you know, Holmes is trying to unravel it, 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 as it goes. It's a big sprawling story, yeah. um, but I think quite entertaining. Right. I, uh, my, I, my problem with Rachel McAdams as Irene Adler is that she seems a little miscast. She's supposed to be sort of femme fatale-ish. Yeah. Like you could buy that she could turn on Holmes. On, on a dime, that she's yeah. got like a real vindictive streak in her, and Rachel that she's she's too nice. No, yeah, she she is too nice. She, nice. she she spent the movie. I think she's supposed to be glowering and being threatening. Yeah. But she always looks like like someone. Uh, she looks like Rachel McAdams. Yeah, that's <laughs> good. Yes, that's for the record, good. that's yeah. good. Her <laughs> gay, gay. You make out with Rachel McAdams' uh, brother. Well, I, I think I think they Guy Ritchie made the correct correct choice in uh, kind of updating this one because uh, if you had continued to go with the hunting cap and the overcoat it, people yeah. would have just yeah. not reacted. And it throws that out the window. There's no, um, there, there's none, none of that. There's yeah. not even like a winking nod to that. This right. is very much taking, it's a reinvention from the books mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it's pretty uh, interesting. There's a there's a, a sign here that says yep. caustic. Oh. T -t 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 yes. Uh, Alright, so uh, I guess we'll, we'll send it back over to you guys and we'll uh, come back in just a few moments to talk about Avatar. Hey guys. Hello. I think that she thought you were done with me. Hope you were having fun with Court and Fat Boy. I was over having there. fun with Court and Fat Boy. I'm a little disgruntled. I was listening to the conversation, enjoying myself. Yeah, now we're back on. I haven't moved from this chair. We'll be no, here all the time. I got hours, up one time right to here. handle some logistics, right. but yeah. Um, the so, point being, really, that uh, we have to break in because we're going to play some uh, some footage from a Wyden and Kennedy Entertainment show. Right. So oh. what? Yeah. We're, what we're doing, basically, to let you know, is we've got Target for tomorrow setting up. We need to stall a they little bit. They need to make some noise. So they can make some noise. Yeah. And uh, there they are. There are the guys. There's noise. the horns and of the destruction. Horns of destruction. <laughs> Woo! And, uh, okay. And they so, have been here for hours, and they need to get finished setting up. Right. So, so what we're going to do is there's a great documentary, documentary series going on up at Wyden Kennedy Entertainment called Don't Move Here. And it's be, it's behind the scenes of the Portland independent music scene. And so it, great stuff. We're going to show two episodes, episode one and two. You can catch more as they come out on Wyden and Kennedy Entertainment. Mm -hmm. But um, for but now, we'll be I think, back. And yeah. we will have more of Court and Fat Boy, yeah. more of Mike, and Probably finally, more of us. we will have Target for Tomorrow and the Horns of Destruction. Yeah. In Portland, you've got people playing so many different kinds of music. The level of talent is off the charts. People are industrious, smart, savvy, clever, and totally weird. 
the things that happen here are pretty are pretty remarkable and fairly different from what seems to go on in other parts of the of, at least of the parts of the world that I've seen. I'm Shayla, and welcome to the first episode of Don't Move Here. Today we're going to go to Northeast and visit Steve Schrader at the home of States Rights Records, his amazing small record label that he runs out of his house. Then we're going to go to the Artist Area, which is an incredible all-ages venue that's been around for a really long time, and see White Fang and explode into colors. One, two, three, go! Now you know that I'm the... States Rights got started about year 2001. I went to school with a bunch of friends that made music, had bands that um, were my favorite bands in the world at the time. And they were making tapes just to pass amongst their friends. And those tapes really quickly became like my favorite albums. And that quickly made me realize that I could be putting out or like I could be involved with music that was like people's favorite music. So I toured with bands, driving and doing merch and worked kind of crummy jobs, saved money, started doing a couple seven inches and CDRs and that turned out pretty well. So just kept on ripping. Is there any common thread in the kind of music that Stage Rights puts out? I don't think, you know, they're certainly not all in the same genre and for the first few years of States Rights, there was, we were really holding on to this thing called n new genre, no genre music. Can you talk for a minute about um, the recent Jib Kidder phenomenon that you've been dealing with? Oh, sure. Uh, <laughs> you mean that it was on the Fox uh, television reality show, So You Think You Can Dance? Uh, yeah. So I put out this record by this guy who lives in San Francisco named Jib Kidder. The album is like totally sample based, um, hip hop mostly, but also sort of like experimental weirdo music too. And this one song that did pretty well on some MP3 blogs, which is called Window Dipper. We started to see it on YouTube a couple months ago um, that this uh, choreographer dude, Travis Wall, was performing some choreography to the song. And then I got a call from Fox um, when the season started saying that one of their contestants wanted to dance to that song. And we were like, sure, yeah. Because <laughs> that sounds fun. Also, because the song is like kind of questionable in legality. It contains samples of the Microsoft Windows operating system and some other samples that probably should have been clear. It was, it was a really fun concept to try to get that on national television on a big reality show on Fox. Did you have any kind of blueprint when you started the label? The way I run a label, I, I don't have, I don't, <laughs> I don't have a ton of money to invest in recording. So, um, but I think it's turned out great product. What are some of the upcoming releases that you're excited about? Going to do a White Fang record who are like the young, uh, wild, punk sort of prodigies of Portland. the artistry. Aaron, how long has the artistry been going? Like, how did it get started? It was started um, in 2001 as a spiritual creative program. It's, it's a little bit different. It's an all-ages venue. It's, uh, there, there's living places, a little white house next door. There's a recording studio, dark room, a lot of facility stuff, and just basically open space to do whatever you want.
so much time and energy into, you know, making a place like this? Well, I don't know. I think uh, being creative and being able to be creative has been pretty important to me. I've grown a lot from being forced to be around people, so I do it because I think it's good. People who live in Portland tend to think generally and kind of be a little more indoors and sort of crafty than most other cities because we have to be. Well, it's cheap to live here. There's basements, cafes, bars, way more all ages venues. People are playing the music that they're excited about and interested in. I'm Shayla, and welcome back to Don't Move Here. Today we're going to go to the Black Gum Drop, a.k.a. Castle Grayscale, and meet with Mike King and Guy Burwell. These graphic designers are also some of America's foremost poster designers, and we're going to see where they hand screen their work. Then we're going to go to the world headquarters of Audio Dregs and talk with E-Rock and Megan about how they've built this record label and learned to incorporate music and art into their everyday lives. I didn't really make a particularly sort of conscious uh, decision to be a, a graphic designer. It kind of just came completely kind of organically. When I first started doing posters, I was actually hand painting or hand drawing or hand collaging all of the artwork. Um, this is our print room. Actually, uh, all the posters that we've done in this in this room, this building, this studio since we've been here, uh, which is when I started first started screen printing myself. Um, so this is the beginning of my hand done aspect of it all. I mean, people want something to look at. Like the music is great, and it's great to have access to to music, but ultimately. No matter what anybody in any band will ever tell you, it's only part of the story. This is the very first one up on the wall. Uh, coincidentally, the first print we pulled in here. And my first hand-printed screen print ever. Most of these posters are made because it's a, I, I think it's a cool thing and I'll do it. Not because somebody thinks, I'm going to give you X amount of money to make this happen. Most, you know, a lot of them happen because I, in one way or the other, or another, like the people involved. guy that had a, a record label it was just kind of like I got st stuck with it that because guy. no one else was doing, <laughs> was doing it you know or like you just kind of pick up where, the, where there's slack and you just try to connect everything I didn't really actually never really considered it a label it was just like dubbing my own music and my friends music for other friends kind of thing and then maybe selling some for three dollars on the side here and there to cover the costs 
it's uh, pretty natural to both of our personalities, I think, to like things that are a little bit off or a little bit different. So much of my first record, or the first Evax record, was about taking like whatever sounds we could find and like using these tools to turn them into music. I mean, because like ten, 10 years ago or whatever, it wasn't. I mean, it was definitely a different scene of like you know doing that type of music. It wasn't. People thought it was weird if you self-recorded on a laptop. You know, now it's kind of the standard. Before we'd crawl around with the, like recordable Walkman on tape and the sounds were like too lo-fi to actually use for anything. So we were just excited to take these things and like reapply them in, in however way we could. You know, at one point we were, you know, putting all the different artists like artwork online. That's sort of his role, is just like picking up the sack and setting up shows and doing all these things because I feel like most people that are into it are really appreciative of someone just trying to create something new. So yeah. it's just being a catalyst for creation. Come from Phoebe's 